These limits represent the derivative of a function at some point a. Find f of x, the function, and a. So we're not actually being asked to evaluate these three limits. Let's be clear, we are not going to actually be doing these limits. We're being asked to interpret what these limits mean as a derivative. So it's probably helpful to actually go back to our limit definition of a derivative and let's write those down. We know that the derivative of a function at a, so f prime of a, can be found by computing the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a, all divided by h. And we also know there's a second way of computing this derivative by computing the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. So these are the two ways we can compute a derivative with a limit. So we really need to look at example a and determine which one of these limit definitions is being used. So there's a pretty obvious giveaway here. It's the limit as h approaches zero. So we know that we basically have used this first limit definition. So we're being asked to find the function, what is the function, and then what was the value of a. So imagine it's as if somebody has already put together the limit for you. They've done that work and they're just asking you, what was my original function and what was the value of a? So let me start with the value of a because you can see that we're always gonna have some quantity a plus h. So if you look for what's being added to h, hopefully you can see that here, negative three plus h, that tells me negative three is being added to h and that would be the value of a. So in this case, we're thinking initially that a is equal to negative three. We'll check that in just a second when we determine our function. So our function, remember, a plus h is being substituted into some unknown function. So if we look at our quantity here, negative three plus h, what's happening to that quantity, negative three plus h? It's being squared. So it looks like our function was the function x squared. Because we have negative three plus h, think of it as being substituted into the function x squared, and that would give us negative three plus h squared. Now, let's look at the nine because we can basically check our work with this nine. So where should that nine, where did that come from? Well, in our limit definition, that would have been f of a. So in this case, this nine here should be f of negative three. So let's check that. If our function is x squared and we take negative three and we square it, sure enough, we do get nine. So it looks like our value of a and our function is correct. So let's go ahead and summarize our answer here in a sentence. We could say something like, this limit represents the derivative of the function x squared at a equals negative three. And remember again, we're not being asked to actually evaluate this limit and find the value of the derivative. We're just being asked to basically recognize that, hey, this limit is actually going to compute a derivative. Look at part B, the limit as h approaches zero of sine of h over h. So again, we have the giveaway because we have h approaching zero that we're using the first limit definition of a derivative. This looks a little different though because we don't actually see any subtraction in the numerator. But if I were to extend this division here, and I have sine of h, I really have sine of h minus zero in the numerator. So you could think of this as sine of h minus zero all divided by h. So we do have subtraction there, it's just not written because it's zero. So again, let's look for the a plus h. And I see that I have an h here, but there isn't an a. So if I have sine of h, isn't that really the same as the sine of zero plus h? So therefore, it looks like a could possibly be zero. We'll check that in just a second. 
So if we're thinking a equals zero, let's figure out what our function would be. So our function f of x. So again, we're looking for zero plus h. It was being substituted into what function? It looks like it was being substituted into the sine function. So our function could be the sine of x. Now let's check this by checking what we would subtract here. We would be subtracting f of a, and we're subtracting 0. So that means we would be subtracting f of 0. And that would be the sine of 0. And what is the value of the sine of 0? Well, indeed, it is just 0, which is exactly what we have here. So that supports that our value of a and our function are correct. So we can say that this limit represents the derivative of the function sine of x at a equals 0. And I better box my answers since I have quite a bit of work here. So be sure you're clear on what the actual answer is here. It was the interpretation of what does this limit represent in terms of what is a and what is the function. Part C asks for the limit as x approaches 4 of the square root of x minus 2 divided by x minus 4. So now notice we're not computing the limit as h approaches 0, but this time we're computing the limit as x approaches 4. So that indicates that we're not using the first limit definition of derivative, but actually we're using this second, the bottom limit definition of the derivative, because that's the limit as x approaches a. So I find this one to be even easier to identify because a will be the value that x is approaching. So in this case, x is approaching 4, so we're thinking a may be 4. And it's equally easy to find the function because the function is right here in the numerator. It's the very first function that you have before the subtraction. And in this case, our function here would be the square root of x. So let's go ahead and try if a equals 4 and if our function is square root of x, let's test that out by taking a look at this second value here, the, the 2. So looking at our limit definition, the 2 should be f of a. So if I compute f of 4 in this case, and if the function is the square root of x, then f of 4 is the square root of 4, and indeed the square root of 4 is 2, so that checks out. So therefore on C, this limit represents the derivative of the function, the square root of x, at a equals 4.